I'm going to do this quick tell you the six steps of success. And we're going to go deeper in one of them, because that's the one that we can do here right now. And I'm going to ask, I'm going to get questions. So I'm going to do this a uh, little bit fast. All right. So six steps that you can do. Now you got these five skills. The skills is one thing. The steps are different things, right? Okay. Six things you can do to really get your career moving. First of all, step number one, you have, we talked a little bit about this before, now you have to know your why, you have to find your focus. Focus is absolutely, absolutely fundamental, right? You can't really be an expert on everything and the more, uh, you know, the more focused you are, the better you are at something, the more interesting things that happen. So let me tell you a little thing here. Um, just a quick, a quick, a quick experiment. Maybe some, some of you might have seen this. Uh, you know, can you can you look around and count how many green things you see? Look around. Count how many green things you see. Just count in your head how many green things you see. Hmm? Good. We're able to count. So, how many green things you saw? I saw five. Five. How many you? Nine. Nine? Seven. 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 Five. five. You? Six. Six. Nine. Nine. Okay, now, how many red things did you see? Zero. How many red things did you <laughs> yeah, see? How many red things you saw? One. So now, now look around. You found one. Yeah. Now look around. See how many red things you saw. A lot, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you all seen that. You all seen that movie, that 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 YouTube movie, that you know you have to count how many people, how many times people pass the ball, and then you get to the end and did you see the did you see the gorilla? And like you're like, what? Which gorilla? <laughs> there was a gorilla in the, in the like not not a tiny little gorilla, like a big gorilla that comes and plays around and you miss it. Mm -hmm. That is focus, right? That is focus. Every time you focus, your brain does not have the bandwidth to see everything. It's impossible. You can't see everything. Right? So your brain focuses on, on, on what you want and ignores the rest. So if you, don't, if you don't have a focus, you're probably ignoring everything. Right? So you gotta have a focus. Because once you have a focus, you know, I told you guys the story of Star Wars. How come I watch a Star Wars movie and get ideas about career? Right? You're focused. Because I'm focused, right? I'm looking at things from that perspective. And you, you, do, you can do the same thing. Once you find your focus, you can watch a Star Wars, a Star Wars movie and, tell, and come here and tell everyone the three things you learn about Java 10 watching Star Wars movie because you're going to be focused on that. So find your focus. It's amazingly important. I just told you the story of Elder. When Elder found his focus, he completely changed his life. Completely changed his life. In a few months. I say this a year because it's been a year now. But in three months, he had done more than he had he had, had done the last ten years, right? So find your focus. Amazing part. We're gonna do a little exercise about this in a minute. Second thing. Once you find your focus, you need to learn how to go deep into your focus. And I'm not gonna go in, uh, much into, into this detail here, but because we talk a lot on the, the, the five steps before. The only way for you to go deep is practicing. You gotta practice. A lot. Practice, practice, practice. The difference between a, uh, you know, they, get, they, get, they did research of the top uh, musicians of a top uh, uh, music school in Germany. The top musicians. The difference between 
the musicians that went on to become professional musicians and play in, in uh, uh, you know, playing everywhere in the world and everything, and those musicians that were still good musicians but went to be teachers, right, because they're not, didn't, didn't, didn't become professional, the difference is how much time they practice. Nothing more. It's not how early they started, it's not, it's not if they had talent or not, it's no matter. It's how much time they practice. So practicing, there's one thing called, that you, you can take a look later, is deliberate practice. Deliberate practice is the only scientifically proven way for you to be a specialist, a master in anything you want. You might have heard that thing about the 10,000 hour rule. Have you heard of that? So the 10,000 hour rule comes from the research of the guy that's defined a deliberate practice. Okay? So that's extremely important. You have to go deep into that your focus. Just having a focus that you say it's your focus but you don't go deep in it doesn't help. Right? Number three. We talk a little bit about this. You have to share. Share what? Share what you know. It's not about sharing what you don't know. Oh, come on, Bruno, but I don't know anything to share. So let me ask you, how many of you here have ever done any kind of work, even if it's just a hello word, in Java? Everyone. Okay. So now, who here thinks that with what you know about Java, you can teach something for a kid in, in, you know, in a... In a uh, in school, in high school, for example, that doesn't know anything about programming, who thinks can teach something for a kid? Okay, everyone. Now, who thinks you can teach some, something new about Java to James Gosling, the guy that created Java? I don't either. Well, he does. I don't. So you see, absolutely everyone is in the exactly same situation. You know how to share something to someone and you don't know how to share something to someone else. That's okay. You always can share something to someone. Always. It doesn't matter, you know, how long, you know, I, I've been working with Java since 1995. I started, I'm, I'm one of the, the very first people in the world to start working with Java. Because I, I was working for Sun when the first public demonstration of Java came out. Right? So, but even then, I can't teach a lot of things about Java to a lot of people. That does not prevent me from teaching something to someone. So you can share what you know. All right, talk a lot about sharing, so I'm not going to go much deeper into this, but you have to learn how to share. Blog posts, presentations, uh, you know, share on Twitter or Facebook, doesn't matter. Sharing what you know is amazing part. It's, it's, uh, that can change your career. And a lot of people say, but Bruno, oh, I forgot to turn the camera the microphone on. I didn't write on the board. Okay, well, now we're going to find out if, if the microphone, is, if that one is better than this one here, because there's, there's going to be a piece that will be. All right, so just to make sure. All right, so, uh, sharing, it's amazingly important. Amazingly important. But a lot of people tell me, you say, Bruno, but I, I don't want to change jobs. I'm happy with the job I am. I'm happy working for the company I'm at. It has nothing to do with changing jobs. Nothing. It's not about changing jobs. It's about working on the cool stuff that your company is. A friend of mine, Rodrigo Moutinho, uh, actually, the guy, what's his name? The guy that came here to tell me that, about the email. What's his name? Mike. So Mike came here and said, Bruno, you just sent an email. So yes, that's what's Rodrigo. It's a friend of mine, because I'm here doing the presentation, everything. I sent I sent the text to him so he would prepare the email. But I wrote the email that, that he received a few minutes ago. So Rodrigo, he went to work, for, you know, he, he started he, he start to have a focus on uh, uh, on automation. Right? And because he had a focus on automation, he told me. A few months after he, he had having his focus, he said, Bruno, for the first time, my boss is calling me 
to make decisions in the company. That's it. That's it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a positive feedback loop, right? You, uh, you work on great projects. Because you're working on great projects, you become a better developer. Because you become a better developer, you work on even greater projects. Because you work on great projects, you become a better developer. Because you're a better developer, you work on a great project. Where does this start doesn't matter. The thing is, the only way for you to be a better developer is working on great projects. But to work on great projects, you have to be a better developer. So which, which one you know, is the chicken and egg problem, right? So how you break that chicken and egg problem, you share. Because once you share your focus, your boss, your, your colleagues, people from your company, people from the user group, people from the open source community are going to say, look, you're doing some very good thing about Java EE. Don't you want to work on this Java EE project we have right here? Oh, we have this new customer that wants artificial intelligence. Aren't you the guy that talks about artificial intelligence every company meeting? Maybe you should come take a look at us with that project. Right? Oh, aren't you the guy that, that talks about automation all the time? We have this customer that we can't automate his project. Do you want to take a look? You know, when people know your focus because you go deep in it and you, talk, you share, they will bring you in for the project you are interested in. And once they bring you in to the project, you become a better developer because now you're working on a project that does that. And because you do this, you know, you work on even better projects. And then you become a better developer, work on better projects, become a better developer, work on better projects. It's not about changing companies. It's about being respected for what you're doing. Right? So you got to share. And then people tell me, but Bruno, but there is, you know, Paul is the leader of this San Diego user group. So there is no way, no way, uh, other way that anyone here in San Diego is going to be better than Paul. Who cares? Right? You know, Paul is a great, is a great, what's your focus, Paul? <laughs> now, DevOps. DevOps. Automation. Automation. So, so Paul is a great job developer focused on DevOps, right? You can be a great job developer focused on, on, on desktop. You can be a great Java developer's focus on Java E. You can be a great Java developer's focus on, on, on uh, EJB. I don't know. There is this, this idea, this false idea, that there's just one best guy. And that is not true. There's hundreds of best guys in sports. Thousands of them. Right? And let me tell you two secrets about being the best. First of all, there's a lot of room at the top. Everyone fits at the top. First secret. So if you want to reach the top, you can because there's room. Second secret, no one is trying to reach the top. So it's very empty. Right? So those that want to go, it's wide open. Seriously. Right? So. Share what you know. That will make a big, big difference for you. Now that you're sharing, step number four, poll. That's another step. It's called poll. 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 Yes. Poll? Community. You know, how come you can, how, how are you going to share if you don't have to, who to share to? You gotta have. You gotta be part of a community. You gotta be. A, you know. You gotta help be in a community, right? You know, Paul is here. We came down to this room. What time was? Six o'clock. Five o'clock. Five o'clock. We're down here in this room. If any of you here had arrived here at five thirty, six fifteen, six thirty. Right? What time are we open here? 6.30, right? Yeah. yeah. 6 o'clock, for example. If anyone would come here, it would help Paul uh, gluing the, the signs in the, over there, would help him adjust the pizza over there, would help him 
uh, you know, clean up the room a little bit because I saw him taking some stuff, some stuff out. Right? If any of you have done that, you'll be friends of Paul. A Java champion. A famous speaker at Java 1. Right? Next time you go to next time you have a chance to go to an event, instead of hanging out with the people that know, don't, don't know anyone, you can hang out with Paul because you're a friend of him. <laughs> right? And if you hang out with Paul, what happens is that he's always surrounded by Java champions. Right? So the top Java developers in the world are around him, and there you are. Right? You know, being part of a community makes a huge difference. There's lots of ways to participate in community. Java's groups are a great way to participate. Great. Because, there's, you know, you can, you can do, you know, just by showing up. Show up 15 minutes earlier, help set things up. When everyone, when finished, everyone go home, just hang up a little bit more. Right? And help adjust some things. Talk with Paul about something. Tell him your project. Right? Now, community has another thing. For, for, for us developers, there's another community thing here. There's the open source community. It's the same thing. You know, if you help out, if you participate, you can be one of the top open source developers. Ah, Bruno, this is impossible. Let me tell you a story about a friend of mine. He works, he works at Red Hat. And his name is Andres Galante. He's an Argentinian. And when I've met Andres, he thought it was impossible for him to join an open source project. Impossible. That's the word he he used. And I told him, no, it's not impossible. No, you can, you can, you can, there's lots of things you can share, there's lots of things you can do. So because he, he because he believed it was not that was possible, he made a plan. That was July of last year. He made a plan until July 2018. I want to be one of the top 100 contributors of Bootstrap. Famous projects. One of the top projects in the, in, 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 into the, the, the open source world. Lots of you guys use Bootstrap, I'm sure. In 30 days, 30 days, Andres became number 48. In three months, while we were at Java 1, he had a talk at Java 1 about Bootstrap. While we were at Java 1, he was commemorating because he had just been accepted as one of the nine committers of Bootstrap. In three months. <clears throat> July, August, September. Java 1 was the first week of October, yeah. right? Less than three months. It's totally possible. And the reason why Andres thought it was impossible for him to participate is because he's not even a developer. He's a designer. So it's totally possible for you guys to participate. But that can only happen in JavaScript. No. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. It can happen in any project, in any open source project. You have, you have to know how to approach those guys, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about this in one minute. Okay, so now that's step number four. Community. Step number five. You know, now that you, you have a focus, you, have, you, you know, know how to go deep, you know how to share your message, you, you, you have a community, right? You have to transform people. Not you transform, because you don't transform anyone, but help people transform themselves. Because one of the biggest problems that we have is that speakers are coming here to an event and they talk to themselves. Nothing that they say helps you improve your life. And if your message, your focus doesn't have any, someone transform their lives, nothing happens. Right? So you got to help people to transform. Right? And step number six, now that you're transforming people's lives, people are telling you, Hey, Paul, thanks a lot for organizing the user group. Thanks a lot for bringing that speaker. Thanks, man. You know, because, because you let me talk, say, say what I was doing, I, I was able to get a job. Now, once you have that, right, then you've got to expand that, right? It doesn't help you do this for, for one, two friends. You can do it for even more people, right? So you, have, you can expand it. 
So this is the full, and once you do this, this whole cycle creates a huge, not a small, a huge, yes, expand is like, you know, you're gonna, you, you're gonna, you're gonna go to social media, you're gonna go to blogs, you're gonna go to, you know, do those, those share to more people, help more people, change more people's lives, right? This process here creates a vortex that will get your, your career and throw your career up. Right? Because now you actually have people that their lives change it because of you. Not because of you, because of your message, because of the things that you have that you're, you're helping them out with. Now the important thing here is you are helping them. You're helping them out. It's not about you, it's about them. Let me tell, let me tell you guys one thing that's gonna hurt, especially for the people that, that, that volunteer in the beginning. I should not peek with people that volunteer to speak, <laughs> but I will, for your sake, right? It's gonna hurt, but you know what? When you told you what you do, when you told you you graduated from university, when, you, when someone in the back said that, oh, you know, I, I just came out from Washington or something like that, who cares? Sorry guys, no one cares about you. No one cares about you. Right? So when you, when you have a chance to say something to a group of people, don't talk about yourself. Because no one cares. No one cares that you came from Washington or that San Diego is your, your city. Right? No one cares which university you went to. No one cares. So if you, want to, if you want people to pay attention to what you have to say, help them. Because people care how you can help them get what they want. Right? So if you want a job, instead of saying, hey, you know, I'm great, I'm wonderful, I did this, I did that, stand up and say, I work for a week for free for anyone here that wants. And immediately you got a job next day. Because now you're helping someone to do something. Right? So everything you do, everything you do, your focus, everything here, it's not about you. It's about them. Help they get what they want. Because you can get anything you want in life as long as you help enough people get what they want in life. Right? So how, how long do I have? I, I, I've been too much here. I'm just going to go to, for questions. But five, five, okay. So I want to I want to do questions, but no, no, it's, it's, it's not nine o'clock yet, right? No, it's not nine. Oh, it's nine o'clock yet. Okay, yeah. So we both said that, that he's going to keep me out here nine thirty. So we still have some time for questions. Okay. So I just want to do a quick exercise here. That I'm going to help you jumpstart this whole process here, right? And I'm going to teach you guys one thing that's called uh, the celebrity statement. And actually, this, this is something so important that the reason why I'm here in the U.S. is that tomorrow, I'll finally, not, not uh, tomorrow, yes, tomorrow's end, yes, tomorrow I'm finally going to meet the guy that teaches me this, this, this thing. This thing I call the celebrity statement. Uh, celebrity statement, CS. You know, I learned from a guy called Ted McGrath, and I'm going to meet him tomorrow in, in L.A. Uh, the celebrity statement. It's you very say simple. Slowly, celeb celebrity statements. Celebrity, celebrity. Liberty. Okay. Or the celebrity phrase, if you prefer, or statements. Okay. Right? The celebrity statement is very simple. Write that down. Celebs. Write that down on your phone. Yes. <laughs> that, that's, that's the most important thing to do. You know, if you didn't pay attention to anything right now, until now, write that down. <laughs> yes. That is the most important thing you're going to take here from here today. Right? If you don't write, write that down. If you don't write that down, you're gonna forget. I've, I've, I've done this hundreds of times. Can I take a picture? Of the board? Yes, you can. No, don't take a picture. I want you to write it down because what's on the board is not what you're gonna write down. You're gonna write down something different than what I write on the board, right? Because I'm gonna write on the board a template, and you're gonna write your celebrity statement. Very important. So it's very simple. I help. Repeat with me. I help. Dot dot dot. I'm actually going to do, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do, make it, make it easier for you. 
I help people. I help people do this. Repeat with me. Do this. Do this. Do this. So they got. Okay, wait. They can have have that. Do this so they can have that. Come on, everyone read with me. I help people do this so they can have that. One, two, three. I help people do this so they can have that. Cool. They can have or become. Okay? Become works also. What does what does this mean? Who are people? People are the people that you want to help, you want to be friends with, you want to hang out with, you want them to be your customers, you want them to be your boss, you want them to be, you know, uh, uh, the people that, that, that are friends that come to your house, right? So I, I love job developers. I love developers in general, but it's particular job developers. So I, I, I you know the fact that I'm here, I'm going to spend the night in Paul's house, it's a great it's, it's wonderful for me. You now he's a, one of the top Java champions on the planet. He's a uh, Java group leader. Me having a chance to be, to be part of Paul's family, it's unique. Right? So that's the type of people I want to be friends with. If I want to be friends with, I want to help Paul in whatever Paul needs because that makes I'm going to have a bigger chance to be his friend. Make sense? Because if I want Paul to help me, he's not going to do it. Right? Why, why is Paul going to help me? He might help me for some reason, but, but if I want, I want to be friends with him, I want to help him. Because I have the control of what I can do. I, don't, I can't control Paul. Right? I told him, Paul, I'm coming to San Diego. And... Did I say that? that? Yeah. He said, Bruno, we're going to have a meeting this month. We can't have a second meeting. I said, Paul, I'm coming to San Diego, whether you have a meeting or not. Because I'll be in Los Angeles. We've been talking about for years. I should go visit you. So I'm coming there. Right? If you, if you join a group with two people to, to, to talk with me, that's great because I'll be there no matter what. So I'm helping him put 20 people in the room. That's great. Right? So that's, you should put, you should position yourself as helping someone. Helping someone to do what? Something that you want? No. What they want. Remember, they don't care about you. They care about how you can help them get what they want. So now that you know who people they want to help, think, what is those people? What is that they want? So this this is you. This is what you do. I help professional job developers to work on the best projects, the best teams. That's what I do. There's lots of ways I could help Java developers to work on the best projects, the best teams by learning Java 9. But I help Java developers to work on the best projects, the best teams by learning how to share. That's what I do. Go to my Twitter, you're going to see. I help professional job developers to uh, share what they know so they can work on the best part of the best teams. I know it works. I've been doing this for 20 years. I have doses of people, lots of Java champions, lots of speakers worldwide. I, I coach 800 speakers on TDC, the largest uh, uh, developer events in, the, in, the, in Latin America. I coach 900, 900 uh, speakers there. I know it works, so I can help you share what you know to work on the best product, the best teams. Today, Danny Montero, that started that start working with us uh, late last year, she said, Bruno, I was naming Microsoft MVP. And she said that, that's the funny thing, she said that because in the group I said, guys, did you see? That Danny Montero has just published an article on a, on a 
famous magazine. And I was like, very happy for you, Danny. And she's like, oh, that's nothing. I was just naming MV Microsoft MVP today. I'm like, what? You know, I know it works. So I can help you do the same thing. So what is it you do? Who are the people that you're going to help? Who are the people that you want to help? Right? And what is it they want? And what is the thing that you do? So that's what I want you to do right now. Write it down. Okay, here, here how you're going to do this. Okay, so I see lots of, lots of blank stares. So here's how you're going to do this. So you're going you're gonna to write down on your paper. You're going to write people, people equals. Right there, people equals. And write down wh who are the people that you want to be friends with. You want, to be, you want them to be your customers. You want them to be your boss. You want them to be your friends. You want to invite them for a barbecue in your house. You want them to invite you for a barbecue in their house. I don't know. Who are the people that you want, really want to be, you know, you want to be part of that group, right? Maybe that's job developers. Maybe that's developers in general. Maybe that's, uh, you know, but you have to be specific. Why you have to be specific? So, do, it, they, do, do anyone knows a company that sells for anyone? Developers love to, love to, oh, I want to do, I want to help everyone in the planet. So do you, do you know a company that sells things for anyone? Everyone. No. In the Amazon. planet? Hmm? Amazon. Almost. Amazon, that's a good one. <laughs> Another one. Walmart. Walmart, that's good. Nothing. You know? There's, there's, there's one I like to mention a lot because, because, because it's, it's, it's very, very indicative. You know, you're, you're drinking something from their competitors right there. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, right? Yeah. You know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, uh, uh, you know, those companies sell to anyone. So when you see a, a TV commercial from Coca-Cola, what do they sell? Do they sell Coca-Cola? Sure. No. No? no. Brand. What do they sell? Lifestyle. But there's one thing they sell. Happiness. happiness. Coca-Cola sells happiness. That's, that's what, you know, if you help people in general, what does people in general want? Happiness, right? So they do it very well at work. So they sell happiness. Now the question is, who here in this room has the marketing budget of Coca-Cola? Hmm. I don't. <laughs> right? So if you don't have the marketing budget of Coca-Cola, you cannot market to everyone. Right? You know, for Coca-Cola to, to sell happiness, they have to market for everyone. So you have to be specific, very specific. So do you write that down, everyone? Anyone still missing? People, be very specific. Let me, let me hear a couple of those. You have one? No? Kids. 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 Which kind of kids? Uh, high school and below. Well. Okay, that's, that's better. High school kids, kids in school. Kids in school. Kids in school, right? Anywhere in the world? Pardon? Anywhere in the world? Right now we're in San Diego. San Diego, much better. San Diego kids, you know, San Diego kids in the schools. Private and public? Yes. All right, okay, good. You know, that's, that's good enough. Anyone else? Want to experiment? Didn't come up with anything. Didn't come up with anything? Try. <laughs> come on, try. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you in a minute. Here, say. Hiring managers. Hiring manager. That's very good. You know, the best way, the best people you can put here mm -hmm. is someone they know they are. Let me give, let me give you an example. Uh, you, you came with, 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 with him, right? Yes. Is that your son? Yes, he is. Okay. So, if I tell you, you're not a father. Huh. What's going to happen? I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, you're going to come here and kick my butt, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you, you might not. You might not. But if there is a mother here in the room with us, and I tell you you're not a mother, she's going to come here and kick my butt. For sure. Right? Mother is one of the top, what we call, egoistic labels. It's something that you consider yourself to be, and you're, you know, you... If someone tells you you're not, you're going to get mad. So that's what you just did. You say, 
you know, I help hiring managers. Someone is a hiring manager, he says, I am a hiring manager. He considers himself a hiring manager, right? It's harder to say, you know, for example, kids at school might not consider themselves I'm a kid at school. And I'm, I'm going to get to his example in a minute because he probably doesn't help kids. He probably helps parents. Whatever he, he's going to say later. You know, it's very hard for us to help kids because they usually don't want to be helped with anything. But we can help parents, right? Usually. But let's see. Okay. So now you have people, right? Anyone else could want, to, want to say yours? I love your. How you manage is perfect. Anyone else has experiment yours? Come on. What do you thought about? Give it a try. Architects. Architects. Very good. Architects are a very good one. Architects. Right? You could be more specific. Both architects, hiring manager. You could be more specific. The hiring manager in the US. Architects in California. Right? Because those people are different. It's not because you help architects, they're going to help any architect in the world. Right? You know, what is... Now that you have people, next step that you're going to do is what is, the, what is it they want? You, you write that. That's equal. What does those, that, that person you wrote, that, wrote down, high manager, architects, kids, or maybe parents, right? What is it they want? What is the thing, what is the thing that they, when, when, they, when they put their heads in the pillow at night, what is the thing that comes they're worried about? What is the thing they, they you know, what, what, is, what is dreadful for them? What is the thing they really want? What's the thing they want to happen? Is it is it health related? Is it is it money related? Is it uh, you know relationship related? You know, there's a, there's there's five or six basic needs that people have. What is it those people want? Really, what they really really want? Kids want to play, right? That's easy, right? Hire managers. Maybe they want to hire people, right? They want to hire the best people in the industry. Right? Or they want to, you know, they, they want to fill the position or something like that. What is it they want? Write that down. That equal, write that down, what they want. Question. I was just going to ask about the people one. So, um, mm -hmm. one of the focus areas I have and something I've enjoyed before was cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. and, well, crypto technology and some the currency. So, if I wanted to speak to people on that, I don't know the businesses specifically, but I'm very interested in helping provide more secure communications. And I want to, I want to do that with the right business. How would you frame that? Okay, so it's, it's not, it's not about business. It's about people, yep. right? Who are the people that you help? You know, if if you do, if you said, you said secure communications, mm -hmm. who are the people that need secure communications? Are they developers? Are they CEOs of companies? Are they owners of banks? Are they, you know, who are the people that needs that? I think more the consumer that's actually using. Oh, you want the consumer. Right. right. So you're going to help the consumer. Right. So, you know, so, so, uh, uh, so which type of consumer really worries about security? Mm. None. Only when they get hacked. Okay. Right. So, 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 so that's, that's what you have to see. You think, see, it's not about you. Right. Remember, it's never about you. It's about them. It's not about your dis, it's about what they want. Right. Right. So the thing is, it's hard. If people don't want security, you can't sell security because that's not what they want, mm -hmm. right? So now you have to you have to frame things. Uh, an industry, for example, let, let me tell you one industry that has the same problem. Mm -hmm. If you sell life insurance, right? Who who walks around the life and saying, "Oh man, I might die tomorrow"? <laughs> no one, right? No one. And that's the thing you don't want to think about. You don't want someone calling you and say. You know, you might, you might die tomorrow and leave your family poor. Don't, people don't want to hear that. So you have to make them think about that to, to that become a problem for them. So, so, so that become a problem for them. So, so that would be more peace of mind instead of what security. Peace of you mind could be a good thing. Peace of mind. Yes. Like Coca Cola offers happiness. You offer them peace of mind. You say, hey, this will bring you peace of mind so that you can go do whatever you need to do without worrying about getting hacked. That's a good thing. You know, I would say, I would, I would, uh, one thing I would do is think about more specific, right? So who needs security? You know, someone that does investments, you know, like, like, uh, you know, like, a, sort of like a, a home broker kind of thing. That person might be more interested in security than a random person in, in, in life. But you're totally right. 
you know, peace of mind, right? Maybe one of the things that you know, secure communication. Maybe you're, you're talking about people that are, uh, that are owners of small business and they want peace of mind to run their business without being hacked, for example, right? Or, or they want to be peace of mind of actually dealing with money without losing everything. So, you know, you have to find out exactly. The, my suggestion to you is get one person. So think about, it, really, one person. One person that you know, say, this friend of mine, his name is Joe. He needs that. And think about Joe. I help Joe. What is he doing? What's his problem? Call him on the phone and say, Joe, I'm thinking about you. Tell me, tell me what you need. Talk with him. And get in from one person, you, you can start feeling which other person are like Joe. Make sense? Okay? All right. So you got that? Everyone, everyone wrote down the one big problem that this person has? One big thing they want? You wrote that down? Now, write this equal. Equal. And think about what is that you're good at. What was the thing that you want to be good at? Is it Java? Is it DevOps? It's it, you know. And you can take a look at your own life. See the thing that you did in your life past. Can anyone tell me what is it the fish does that's amazing? Swim? It's swim? Breeds on water. You, breeds on water, right? You swim, right? Mm -hmm. So the fish breeds in water. That's amazing, right? Now if you ask the fish, man, that's amazing that you breathe in water, what do you think is the fish going to tell you? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. nothing. That's, a, that's what I do all the time. Right. You are the fish. There are things that you do every day, every week, in every job, in every, everywhere you are, that are amazing. The people around you notice how great those things are. They thank you for that. They say, man, thank you very much for doing this. And you're like, no, that's nothing. That's, I just do it because I like it. When you find this, that's your this. Right? This is the thing you do. And it might take, a, might take some time. Right? This is, this is not immediate. It might take some time. You have to, you have to experiment. Now you got this, people equal, that equal. Now put in a phrase. That's it. Fill in the blanks. Now that you fill in the blanks, tell me. Who wants to tell me her phrase? Come on, the architect guy. guy. So, I've written, um, I help people. No, people no. Architects. architects. Mm -hmm. Have their architecture proven. Um, Oh no, okay, so uh, I, I help architects analyze and produce the code mm -hmm. so that they can have the architecture proved. Okay, so, so the, the problem with that, that's good, it's really, really good. The problem with that is that uh, it, the more concrete you make things, the better. You know, analyze their codes is like not very concrete. What exactly that is, not very sure. You know, if you make it more concrete, like, you know, find bugs or, or, you know, I don't know. If you think about something more concrete, more obvious for you to understand what it is, that's, that's going to make your phrase better. But yes, that's a very good start. You didn't even, have, you didn't even think about too much before, but now you, that's a good start. So repeat the phrase. As I said it or yes, as we as, as, as you said, as you said. Um, I help text. Mm -hmm. Analyze their architecture and generate the code mm -hmm. so that they can have their architecture proven. They have, 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 have. What what it means the architecture proven? Well, as an architect, you're always afraid that you maybe overcomplicate things. Mm -hmm. That when you have to actually realize this architecture, writing the code, that mm -hmm. you haven't thought through all the elements, mm -hmm. all the problems. And uh, if I were an architect, I would be very worried about these mm -hmm. things. 
All right. So 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 it's, it's not only proven. Is that actually to 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 make sure that your architecture is going to work? Yeah. All right. So that's going to work is more concrete than proven. Okay. okay? So no, you have to you have, try to make it as concrete as possible. So now, now that you have, you know, I help architects, you know, make sure their architecture actually works on, on real life, for example, right? Or, or, or works to solve their problems, the real, the real company problems. Now you can write, you know, you can say, for example, three mistakes architects, you know, company, I, I would be more specific, like, you know, uh, software architects or company uh, architects or, you know, something like this, right? Um, three mistakes that software architects make that prevent their architecture from working in real life, right? Three things I've learned about making architectures working in real life that I've learned in watching Star Wars yesterday. You already have content, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you can write a blog post about this and I can guarantee you that some architects are going to read. Make sense? Anyone else wants to experiment with their phrase? Yes. Yeah, so. Now, now, now we're going to find out if your phrase is for parents or for kids. Well, it actually, okay. So it started out with I help kids do programming so they can create and solve problems. Uh -huh. So, but it really it comes down to I help, I am helping UCSD organize uh, adults to create a class to teach kids how to program. Okay. And that's what I'm doing. So. All right. Yeah. No. You have, okay. So so when you help when you help uh, uh, you know U.S. Uh, uh, didn't like one particular company is not it's not enough, right? You know you can't you can't you, you can't be as broad as people, but you can't be as specific as you know the people from this one company. You know, it's like no, don't be too specific. Try a little bit broader. Uh, but you know, you help uh, uh, you know parents of kids or to, or to university teachers, right? And I have to find out which one it is. Right? University teachers to you know to teach programming for kids so they can so they can do what? Why 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 do you want to teach programming for kids? So the kids can create and solve problems. So the kids can create and solve problems, right? So why why would the parents want their kids to create and solve problems? No, the kids do. Hmm? Oh, why do the kids, or why do the, why do why the, do the people? Do yeah, why do the parents would be, want to do the kids? For the exact same reason you're talking to us. <laughs> to get better. To go out in the world and okay, so, be successful. Right, so that's much better. You know, I help parents or I help teachers to teach programming for kids so they can be successful in the world. That's, that's very powerful. That's very. That's a lot more. A lot more powerful. That's what they want. They don't want kids to learn programming. No parents want to leave kids leave to learn programming just to learn programming. You know the reason why they put their kids through all those things, right? And all this, this, this idea, you know, this, this side projects and and all this class and everything is because they want their kids to succeed. So that's that's you have to play in what they want, not what you want. It's all about them. You know, no parent says. Oh yes, you know, I'm gonna put my kids to uh, you know to this programming class so they can learn how to solve problems. It's like I don't care if they learn how to solve problems. Would that would that get get, get him a good job? Yes, that's what I want, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I want I help parents get their kids to the top of the class. Whoa, that's what they want, right? So think about you have to think about the way they think. Make sense? All right. Anyone else? So this little exercise here that you just did does wonders because that I, I think this this phrase is magic. It's magic because now you know who are the people they want. If you're looking for teachers or parents, you know where they are. They are. You know which Facebook groups they participate at. You know which events they go. Right. If you're looking for software architects, you know exactly where they are. You go on LinkedIn, you go on Facebook, go anywhere, you know where these people are, so you know how to talk to them. It's not a faceless, anonymous group anymore. You know where they are, so you can go and talk to them, right? Now that you're talking about what they want, they're interested in you. 
It's not about you anymore. It's about them because you're going to help them get what they want. So they will want to talk to you. They want to come to your presentation. They want to read your blog. They want to come to your Twitter because now you're going to talk to them. Right? And all of these you're going to do by doing what you want to do. You're not going to do anything. You know exactly what it is that you're going to do. You know exactly what it is you're going to focus. You, find, you, you actually found your focus. And because you are helping someone with your focus, you can go deeper in your focus. Because now you're going to see results. Right? Now you're going to see results of what you're doing. It's not, a, it's not a generic thing anymore. Every person you help, you're going to say, man, you know, and it's, it's a feedback loop. Right? Because now those people, they come to you because they say, look, can you help me with that? And you say, yes, I can help you with that. How are you going to help me with that? I'm going to teach you this. Whoa, that's great. Now I've learned this. How do I use this better to help that? Oh, let me, let me teach you a little bit more of that, of this. And so now just by answering their questions, you can go deeper into your own focus. Because now you have a conversation going. Because you now you're helping them get what they want. And this here, you know, that's the first step. Then you keep doing the rest. Go deeper in it. Share it. Uh, build a community around it. Uh, uh, help people transform their lives. You know, help parents really see their kids succeeding. And once you do this, once you get to a point where, man, every, you know, I've, I've worked for last year, and every single parent that came to me, to, they're working with me, their kids are the top of the class. Are you really just going to talk with the kids from San Diego? You know, are you, are you, are you going to be, you know, are, are you not going to help every other kid in the U.S.? Start here first. You know, I'm, that's, that's what I'm saying, right? That's what, that's what you have to expand. Mm -hmm. And that is, the, that is the full feedback loop. And I talk too much. And the reason why I talk too much is because I, I, I'm a little tired. So I keep forgetting that I need to ask questions. So, you know, with that, I want to have a conversation with you. I'm sorry I talked too much. I, I, I should have talked a lot less. But, you know, what is going on with your life right now? What are the problems that you're having to get a job, to change job, to increase in your job, to whatever question? There's no, it doesn't need to be any of what we're talking about here. You, now you have all the tools that you need. No questions. So why are you thinking about questions? Let me give you my gift to you guys, to everyone. Okay, so this is, uh, if you're a junior, uh, I, th I, think, I think I'm just going to give you the same, the same advice I already gave you. But if you are, if you have many years of, prof of uh, as in a career, it doesn't need to be a developer career, an IT career, technical career, have many years in a, in a, in a career, and you're feeling stuck, things are not going what, like, like you should, you're not growing a lot every, you know, every, every, every year, every month, uh, I can help you. So I'm going to give you this URL uh, right here, HTTP. You can, you can type this in your phone right now. JAV.MN is slash US, everything lowercase, okay? US 2018. Okay, so let me explain what that is. Uh, I'm doing this tour here in the United States, and when I come back, I'll come back to Brazil on the 23rd or 24th. And um, because I'm, I'm going to another event in Brazil, right? So I'll, I'll come back and I'll come back in the 18th from here. Then I go to another event. So so by Monday, I think it's 23 or 24. I'll be back at home, and. Yes, sorry. There is, you. That's me. That's me right there. So, you know, so what's going to happen is that I will go back and I will open up my agenda and for two weeks, I'm, I'm going to try to explain for three weeks, for, for two or three weeks, I will talk to you about your career. 
So what I'm, what I'm giving you as a gift here is that if you go on this web URL, there's a little form that you have to fill out so I, so I know what problems you're going through. And once you fill out the form, you're going to get, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a professional developer and you have the problems that I'm talking about here, uh, you're going to get to my calendar and you can schedule with me a 45 minutes conversation. On that 45 minutes conversation, what we're going to do is I'm going to help you have clarity on your, on your dreams for the next year. Right? I'm gonna help. Uh, uh, I'm gonna help you uh, eliminate the biggest problem that prevents you from ach from achieving your dreams. And I'm gonna with you. We're gonna make a plan for you to do that for next year. Right? The same thing I did with the other guys I told you about. Uh, there is a friend of mine. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna say his name because because he has not announced that publicly. But he had a conversation with me uh, about uh, two months ago. Or three months ago, two months ago, he had a conversation with me on beginning of the week, Monday or Tuesday, I don't remember. On that same week, he, you know, he had gone to several interviews with different companies and no interview had succeeded. So on that same week, he was interviewed by Facebook. And you know, we had a lot of conversation about what he wanted in terms of Facebook and everything. And he was hired by Facebook. But the most amazing thing is that uh, you know, he was he was he was interviewing uh, by uh, for a specific position in Facebook. Facebook increased his level. I think he was, he was being interviewed by level B or C, and he was he was he was actually hired by level B or A. I don't remember exactly the detail, but but he was he was hired one level above. And you know, he called me back and said, Bruno, the reason I was I was hired is and and they they made an offer that I could not resist. It's impossible for me, to, for me to say no to the offer. And he said the reason, and he's moving from the U.S. to Brazil, by the way, because, I mean, from, the, from Brazil to the U.S. Uh, for this job. And he said the reason why I did this is because we had that conversation. So it can change your life, right? So if you're feeling stuck, uh, I suggest you go there. It's a little form, uh, just a few questions. And I'm, I'm, it's a 45-minute it's a conversation. A conversation like this, you know, if I, if I, uh, I usually charge to do this. Uh, you know, there's, there's people that pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars to do that. I'm doing completely free for you guys. But let me tell you one thing, very honest. I, I don't see anyone typing right now. I, I, sh I think you should. Because this is just the first meeting. <coughs> Several days. Right? And as you see, you asked 2018. That is, I'm going to offer this for everyone on this tour. And there's not a lot of room available. It's just going to be three weeks. I can't do more than that. So... If you're interested, I suggest you right now, while we're doing the questions, you can go in online and register right now. And we're gonna, it, it goes in my calendar and you have the spot. All right? That's my gift to you. Questions? You can ask questions and, and do this at the same time. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just simple questions on the forum. I'm not sure if everyone like. I don't have questions because he answered all my things that I wanted, or it's like nothing that he said made any sense, so I don't have any questions, or I'm not going to use any of that, so that I don't have any questions. Come on, questions. Question. Yes. Um, as a junior dev, how do you get over the imposter syndrome of not feeling like you know enough to qualify for a job that you excellent. For? That's an excellent question. Does everyone know what imposter syndrome is? What's it called again? Imposter syndrome. The imposter. Syndrome. Not everyone knows. Okay, so let me, let me first explain what it is. Imposter syndrome is that sensation that you have, that you have no idea what you're doing, that you're an imposter, right? You're just faking it out. And that at some point, people around you is going to notice that. You're going to say, ha, you don't know, ha, 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 ha. You're fine. <laughs> That's the imposter syndrome. And my experience, I have no, no scientific basis to say that, but my experience is that women has, have more imposter syndrome than men. And it's not because women have more imposter syndrome than men, it's because men, they like, I have no idea how to do this, but I'm gonna do it. You know, men don't say they don't know. They fake it better, right? Yes, they fake it better because you, you know, women are looking at the man and saying, you don't know how to do this, you're incompetent. So men don't, don't like to show to, to see that incompetent. 
So men say, I'm going to do it. I have no idea, but I'm, I'm going to do it. I know it. And women, usually, not all of them, but usually women are like, well, I'm not so sure if I know how to do this, so I'm not going to say anything. So women kind of externalize, I guess, imposter syndrome more than men. But everyone has. If you talk with someone, if you do a conversation like I do with people, and they, you know, they know their boss is not looking, their friends is not looking, it's just me and you, everyone has. Now, what you have to understand about imposter syndrome is, imposter syndrome is that notion that you have no idea what's going on, and so at some point people are going to find out you have no idea. And the reason why we have that is because software development is one of the most complex things that human beings ever created. So the truth is, we have no idea what we're doing. All of us. We have no idea what we're doing because we're always doing something new. In Brazil, we have this, no, this idea of software factories. Have you ever heard of that term, software factories? Yeah. Is that the place where you, know, you have those developers kind of... Spin off development and other things. Yeah. So that's... It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a software factory <laughs> is a CD printing factory, factory. Right? A factory is something that does the same thing over and over and over. There's no such thing as a software factory because every time you do a software, something different. It's something new because if you, if you are something that we already did, you would be the same thing. You would just copy what you already did before. So every single time that we sit down to write software, we're doing something that we have no idea how it's going to work. That's why software is very hard to estimate. Very hard. Very, very hard. We're talking about you know, the top estimators companies in the planet don't estimate well. So, so you know, the reason we don't know what we're doing, software is much more art than it is engineering. And because it's much more art than it is engineering, we have no idea. So every time, we're going we're gonna to fake it. You have to understand that. That is everyone here does that. Everyone, your colleagues do this. Your boss does that. Because we have no idea. So you have to assume that's the way, that is, that is a, a feeling that you're going to have absolutely every time you're going to sit in front of a computer. So embrace it. Yes? I have no idea, but my skill is not knowing how to do. My skill is knowing how to solve problems. So I'm going to sit down and I'm going to solve that problem. It's one more problem that I'm going to solve. And, and I'm not an imposter in solving problems because that's what I do. That's what I know how to do. So take, you know, take responsibility and understand that, that that's it. And if you're not feeling that way, that's a different thing. That's, another, that's the other side of this. Right? If you're feeling that way, it's because you're experimenting new things. If you're not feeling that way, it's probably because you're stuck. Right? So the more you embrace that feeling and you realize that that's actually a good feeling to have, the more you're going to succeed. Because the moment you're going to start running away from that feeling and you're just kind of doing the things that are safe, doing the things that you already know, that's when you get stuck and you don't grow anymore. Make sense? That's a really good question. Questions? No? Come on, don't be shy. You know, the reason why I came all the way from Brazil here is to talk to you. If you don't ask questions, I can, answer, I can solve your problem. <laughs> what problem are you going through? Okay, in the back. No, no, no problem. Just a question. What, what do you do to make money? Like, what is your business? What do I do to make money? Yeah. So I, I, have a, I have a consulting company called Suma Technologies that... Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, we, we do, my specialty, if you want to know what is the thing that's, that kind of made me grow all, all my career, my specialty is to solve impossible projects. That's what I've been, I've, I've worked in most of my career, is to solve impossible, impossible problems. I, I, I would get with a team in a project that is under budget, it's, it's late, uh, you know, customers are complaining, nothing works, and we'd sit down to fix the projects and, 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 and make it run and working. So, and I, I did this for many, many, many years, um, and uh, I got very good at that. And then what happened was that I, I, was, I, I was hired for a project, for a very sophisticated project, a very large, you know, a very well-funded startup, 
lots of big names putting money in it, lots of money, and they're doing like a, a retail e-commerce projects, huge, uh, and you know, dream project, right? You know, they wanted to do everything on open source. They wanted to do contribute back to the community. They want to, you know, to change the way people do e-commerce. Like you know, fantastic idea project, and you know, they hired. Uh, um, our whole team to solve a lot of the problems that they're, they're going to have to have an amazing project, excellent. It was the worst project of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I got home, I would lay down my wife's lap, I was cry. said, I don't want to go there anymore. In the morning, I didn't want to get up, I didn't want to go. My wife's like, come on, you have to go, take responsibility. You know, go do what you need to do. And it's like you know, the worst project of my life. So when we actually finished that, uh, I promised myself that I was not, never going to do that again. That I was never going to work uh, on projects like this again. And, and, that's, uh, um, and I would help uh, you know, developers around the world to work on the best projects that they could have, they could get. And so uh, that's why in this last two years, I, what I'm doing is that I'm doing this crusade to actually help people improve their careers and, and get people to actually work on, on, on the best project they can. Because uh, you know, there's there's a big discussion. I think that's a that's a a little touchy topic. But you know, since we have lots of women here, lots of women that are just out of the university and everything, a uh, big to big touchy topic, and it's being recorded. It's even worse to say talk about this thing. But you know, this whole thing about women in, in technology, right? You know, there's not enough women in technology and things like that. But you know, uh, if you think about how how people are doing, you know, tell me. You guys, right? You know, who here has working on a project that you know you have to work late at night, you have to work on weekends. You know, your project uh, it's very stressful. You can't you can't really uh, you know uh, you, you 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 feel overwhelmed the whole time. Uh, you don't see your family enough. Uh, you know, you you don't feel valued enough. You don't earn enough money, right? And a lot in a lot of times, actually, most of the time, actually, you you do all this effort. You take time away from your family. You take time away from yourself. You, you hurt your health, and in the end, the code doesn't, get, doesn't even get in production. Now, who has been in a project like this? <laughs> right? Everyone. So my question is, it's not about why not enough women want to do this. My big question is, why the hell do men want to do this? <laughs> right? And that's what, I, that's what I don't want people to do, right? I want you to work on the best projects, right? I want you to work on projects that are... They're, they're value you, that you actually can, that you're actually doing good things, that you're actually changing things in the world, right? And so, uh, uh, so that's, that's the crusade I am right now, right? I, I want both men and women to work on the best project ever and not being stuck on this never ending. And the thing is, right, every time I say this, you know, people are like, well, but my company is never going to change, and that, this and that, so I need to change jobs. And no, it's amazing how much, you know, you don't need to change jobs. There's a, I have a professor called Professor Marcus. Um, I've met him, and he's a professor at, at, um, at um, uh, how do you say, a technical school, right? Second, uh, I mean, high, high school, but they, they teach computers as technical school. So, uh, and, and we, he went to one of those conversations with me, and he said, you know, because I was, I was talking about, uh, he wasn't on my presentation, and he came later and said, Bruno, I know your friends and everything, can I, can I apply to one of those conversations? Of course, man, you know, that's the whole point. So he applied to the conversation, he came to me and said, Bruno, I'm, I'm very upset with my work, right? Because he, all of the things you just mentioned here, right? You know, he, he was undervalued and he was not doing cool things, he was not, not, not doing new stuff, and, uh, you know, his company was, was, was a, a, like a, a family-owned company that's not interested in technology and all of that, and he, he complained and complained and complained about what's this project going on. And then when, once he finished asking him, Professor, you know, tell me one thing. You're telling me that you know, you, uh, the, the most important thing for you is that you teach at the technical school. That is the, that is the, the moment of the day that you, you, you feel great, right? And then you're telling me that you work five minutes walking from your house and then you go to teach at the technical school it's 10 more minutes walking from work right and then what you want to do is move to another place 
that might be across town and you might have to get hours of traffic and you might have to give up your teaching because now you can't get anywhere, anywhere in time because Sao Paulo is crazy. So what is your priority? And he said, well, you're right. You know, this place where I work is amazing because of that. I said, okay, so now that you realize that it is amazing because of that, instead of complaining about it, what can you do to fix those problems? Is there anything you can do in your project to fix those things? So we discussed about ideas. And then 30 days later, he called me. I usually don't talk with him when I go to the school to give, to give a talk. But this time he called me and said, Bruno, I want to talk to you about, you know, we, we changed the project inside the company. Uh, you know, we introduced a new technology. We're doing mobile application. We're doing IoT. I'm hiring new people from, from my students. I'm hiring the best students to work with me in, my, in the company. And all of these is because I changed my mentality. Yes. Yes. Right? When you take responsibility for what you're doing, for your job, your career, Right? You know, you change everyone around you. Because, you know, people lack the ideas, they lack the, the leadership, they don't know what to do. Most people are running just to be more busy and not to actually have to do effective things. And you can do different. You know, going back to the beginning of this conversation, you know, once you stop and think and decide what is your priority, you can focus what's important instead of focus on what's busy. And once you start fixing, fixing things around you, it's, it's a ripple effect. Right? It changes things. And then, you know, sometimes, very rarely actually, but sometimes people do change jobs because they are working on, on a job that's toxic or they have a big, a huge, amazing opportunity that they can't say no. Right? Elder, for example, he left the company he was working for and he went to, to, work, to, to work for Oracle and he's like, man, I, I didn't want to leave, but I, can't, I cannot accept the offer for Oracle. It was amazing. Yes. It's a different thing you're going to do. It's a, yes. And so, so sometimes, but you know, a lot, of times I, a lot of times people come to me and say, Bruno, I hate my job. I want to leave. I want to go do something else. I said, okay, so what are you doing to fix that? Oh, I just want to leave. I want to go somewhere else. I said, okay. So imagine you coming to be interviewed by me to work on my company. Amazing job, great things, great salary, everything great. And I ask you, why do you want to leave? And you say, I hate my job. And I ask you exactly this question, why are you doing to change it? You said, I don't, I'm not doing anything, I just want to leave. And then what am I going to think? I don't want this guy on my team. Because I know my project will have problems, my project is going to be hard, my project is going, to be, is going to be, you know, they might be interesting and everything, but they're going to be challenging and, and hard. And do I want someone that doesn't want to improve where he is and he just want to leave? The same, as soon as there's any kind of problem in my company, he's just going to leave? I don't want that guy. Right? So if you want to change jobs because you hate where you are, the first thing you do, be the best person in your company. Be the best in your company. Because if you're the best and nothing changes, the problem is the company. Could be. But if you're the best in your company, you're going to see there's a lot of opportunities going to show up. We see this all the time. You know, people from, from, you know, people from working on multinational that suddenly, for no reason, there's this guy in Europe. Find, oh, I know, I know you have a guy that's working for you that, 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 that does exactly what I need. And then this guy that hates what he's doing right now because his team is not growing everything, because he's, he's the best, he's pulled over to somewhere else, another, another, another city, at the same company. Right? All the time we have this kind of thing. So, you know, be the best. Be the best that you deserve to be. There's a whole message here. Be the best that you deserve to be. Right? It's not... It's very easy to say, oh, my boss is terrible, my company is, I, I, it's, 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 it's bad, the project I'm, I'm doing is, 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 is not organized, you know, this and that, and everyone is responsible for everything. Unfortunately, the generation, I mean, you guys are just leaving university, I think you've seen this a lot, 
there is a generation right now that feels like the world owns you everything. That feels like every, you know, every, every problem is someone else's problem and I'm, I should just be here and, and I'm entitled to happiness. I'm entitled to, to, to be rich. I'm entitled to whatever. You're not. No one cares about you. You're just, you know, you're, you're no one. Right? So go help others. Go be the best you can be. Go be competent. And once you are competent, once you're the best, I can guarantee you the world is, is dying to have competent people working. It doesn't matter, men, women, black, uh, uh, Asian, uh, you know, if you're crippled, if, or if you're, it doesn't matter. Every single company in the planet, it's dying to have a competent developer working for them. So if you are a competent developer, none of this matters. But if you're not, if you just think that, you know, oh, because I'm women, I should, I should, I should get this. Oh, because I'm, I'm a student, I should get that. Oh, because I'm, I'm black, I'm Latino, I'm white, I'm whatever. I deserve something. No one cares about you. No one cares about any of that. And no one cares about giving you anything. So go there. Do your best. Be competent. And I can guarantee you, I've seen this. Time after time after time. There's not a single person that comes work with me that does these things and doesn't explode. And I'm amazed. I'm amazed sometimes. There's a guy, there's a, one guy recently, Gustavo, right? I was like, you know, he might see this video and, and be mad with me, but, you know, every, every, time, every time we would talk, you know, he, he, he seems lost. And I'm like, Gustavo, you need, to, you need to, to focus on something. Man, you need to do something. Don't, don't just think. You're going to do. Right? And then, you know, he, he disappeared for a while. And I was like, you know, I wasn't seeing any results. I was kind of working with him. I said, come on, man. Let's do it. And then suddenly, he announced like three weeks ago, I think. He's like, I'm leaving Brazil. I was hired to work in Portugal. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm flying and I'm moving next week and my wife is going to move with the kids in, in a couple of months. Like, everyone changed their lives once they take responsibility for the, for, for the career. You can do that too, right? And if you're feeling stuck, again, that is a great thing. Uh, you know, I would, I would not leave this room. I'll be here for, because what time is it? It's almost 10, yes. You're supposed to be kicking me out a long time ago. So I'll be here, I'll be here a few more minutes. Uh, and if there's anyone has any other question, uh, but you know, you now have my email, you can, you can send me questions. But you know, if you're feeling stuck, take some time before you go. Let how, how your brain works. On the minute you walk out that door, seriously, it takes five seconds for your brain for for your brain to say, that's not gonna work, it's not gonna work for you. Right? Oh, Bruno is never gonna re reply to your email, right? Let's take five seconds. Elder, Elder said that. He, he, on his book, he tells this story. He says, when I wrote an email, because, because that's how I started my relationship with him. He wrote me an email. I, I offered help, and he replied to my email saying, I need help with those things here. But he wrote the email sure that I would never going to reply. <laughs> he, he, he was sure about that. He said, I'm just going to write and send to him. So I, have, so I, I put my thoughts on paper. That's the only reason I'm going to reply to him. But he's not going to read. And when I told this story, about a year later, when I told his story, uh, um, after the first email, I was on a, a, a So Java user group meeting, and I told this story. And I was telling this, right, that I wrote this email and lots of people didn't reply, and just a few did, and Elder was one of them. And I was telling this story, and, this, and the guy in the back said, that's a lie. I'm like, what? You think I'm lying? He said, no, no, no. I don't believe this. Because I received that email and I didn't believe in it and I didn't reply. And I said, you can reply right now. So he did. And he's now director of SoJava. His name is Felix, the second guy. Uh, he, his biggest dream was to work with, on, a, on a project in Java. He found his focus working on desktop. And, uh, you know, after he started working with us, it took two months and he got a job job. On his same company he was already on. He was in a bank. Mm -hmm. On the same company he was working, 
he was he was hired uh, to be a Java developer for a Java desktop application. So you know, yes, I've seen this happening over and over and over and over again. It always works, always, right? So take responsibility, do those six steps, schedule a conversation with me if you want. But I'll start to talk about. It takes five seconds for you, for your brain to say that's not going to work. So the moment you walk out that door, if you didn't schedule a conversation. You're going to think about, oh, I'm, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do it. And then tomorrow something's going to happen. And you're going to have some work. You're going to have something to do. And you're not going to do it. And the next time I come here, I'm going to tell you the stories of people that had success and you didn't. So schedule a conversation right now. Seriously. Because that's, that's the only thing I can do. Is, is tell you, you know, go right now. Because I'm telling you that if you don't do right now, you're never going to do it. I've seen this hundreds of times too. Okay? Thanks very much, everyone. Sorry for the time. Thank you. Thank you for you just watching us online. Thanks very much.